Hello family and friends, it's Kanoi, and I just got done creating my planner setup for 2023 using an altered book, so I thought I would take you along with me in the process of making it. Right now, I have my 2022 planner in here, and last year I said I wanted something clean, simple, and so this was what I went with. I kept it very clean, very, you know, black and white. And to be completely honest with you, I don't really go beyond the monthlies. Like I do the monthlies just to keep my, uh, my schedule for the kids and all of our stuff. But other than that, I don't do a ton of weeklies. Like I think I started weeklies, um, trying to kind of do some memory keeping. And I look at this, I ended on week three. Oh yeah. Week three. Um, I tried to do dailies and that was, was not successful either. <laughs> and I just kind of fizzle out. I don't know. So I decided, you know what, maybe if I can create a junk journal type planner, then maybe I will be more prone to go in it more often on a day-to-day -day basis. So I've been thrifting, looking for books, and this was the most recent book that I came to and wanting to create something whether it just be to use the cover for a junk journal or to um you know use this for my planner i love the spine i wanted to definitely keep the spine but then once i kind of did more research on this book i was like you know i really really want to read the book first before i tear it apart um, and I may not even want to tear it apart after all because this is such a classic. And so what I've decided to do, because it's so beat up, I've decided to go ahead and cover it. So now I can read my book. It'll be nice and protected. Um, and once, yeah, I'm not going to take this apart and here's why. When you look for a book to alter, you don't want the ones that have the sewn in signatures and you can clearly see I believe these are sewn in. Let me, wait, maybe they're not. Let me look here. You want the ones that are glued in because if you start pulling out signatures that are sewn in, yeah, these are sewn in, um, it's going to start to loosen up on the spine. So you know what? That's that. This is going to remain a classic on my bookshelf, and that is that. Let me go try to find another book. This is the book I'm going to use, and I'm hoping this is going to work out. So when I measure this out, it's only five, not even five and a half by seven and a half, and that's going to be an issue. And the reason why is because I need a book that is going to fit these calendars. I printed these out from Nick the Booksmith. This is actually from 2019, <laughs> so luckily the... And I, I'm, I didn't print everything out, but um, luckily everything is undated. There is one, there's one thing that said 2019 on it and yeah, I didn't even print it out. Okay. So everything else is undated in general, so you can actually use it. But I love this idea. I love the idea of, you know... The ability to make it look a little bit more grungy and a little bit more original and less um, same thing over and over. <laughs> so that's not going to work. Let's see if this one will work. This one is, I think, the right size. Uh, and I could, okay, yeah, this is going to be perfect. So the only problem here is that I'm going to have to reinforce the spine because it's clearly falling apart. As we look here at... The signatures, I don't believe they are sewn in. I believe they're glued in. So I think we're okay there. And it's kind of cool because there are some pictures in here that I can probably keep. So I think first things first, what I'm going to do is do the cover. So here I have a pretty thick piece of fabric that I got from a thrift store for only a dollar. And I love the bright colors and I really needed to reinforce the spine with something that would hold up. 
And I was going to fray out the edges, so I did want to leave a little bit of extra room, but then I ditched that idea. <laughs> and then um, my cutting was really bad, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try to get this as straight as possible and get some glue on this bad boy so that we can get it on the spine. So I'm being really liberal with my fabric glue. And then I realized, uh-oh, I actually need to cover the front and back of my book before I can put this on. So let's switch gears. Hang in there. All right, let's go. Let's find something. Oh no, stay away. Gosh. All right, everything's sticking to my fingers now. Oh my gosh, we gotta find something quickly. Something that will match that. And that will be cute. I love that paper. Ooh. Ooh, that's very, that's very me. Very tropical. Ooh, I like this. This one. This is the one we're going with. We need two of these bad boys. Let's use this side. So we're going to go from here. We don't need to cover all the way to here. Okay. So I'm going to use. Whoa! I'm going to use PVA glue just because it's going to be faster. So once again, I'm being really liberal with the amount of glue that I use and just using a card to smooth it all out so it's nice and even. So what I think I'll do is put the corner protectors on there and then I don't have to worry about um, the corners coming off. Uh-oh. Okay, so let's do the other side. Oh no! Oh my gosh, you guys, what is happening? My brand new table. <laughs> okay. Same. Second verse, same as the first. Let's go. So that means using a lot of PVA glue once again, using a credit card to smooth it all out to make sure that my paper stays nice and flush. And then trimming off the edges before placing the fabric along the spine. Okay. That's looking good so far. Don't worry, we're gonna figure out this edge. <laughs> Try to keep somewhat of a straight line this time because clearly my um, cutting skills were pretty bad. Glue this right along the edge. So here I'm using Sari Silk torn or raw edges and this silk tends to be really bunched up whenever you get it so i had to try to figure out a way to kind of spread it out while bunching it up at the same time does that make sense i wanted to make a ruffle but i want it to be wide i figured out that using a card actually helps me to be able to keep the sari silk in place where i bunched it up while still being able to spread out the fabric so it is a little bit straighter and a little bit wider on the edges and then just trimming off the excess and making sure that everything is nice and straight. So, just get this on here. And I've decided to just use my scissors to try to squeeze these corners into place. I mean, a plier might be a little bit more effective, but to get the job done the way I want it, which is quick without having to go look for, <laughs> look for tools in my husband's tool chest. This is what we're gonna do, okay. And I think, I think that is sufficient. All right, so we have got the cover created. I might put a little journal plate on here. Let's see, we're here. So this was just a little piece of fabric that I had, uh, I believe they were, little quilting squares that I found at a thrift store. They were in a, just a little Ziploc bag. So just using some fabric glue to glue it down and then taking my tacky glue and going right along the edges so that I can put down the title plate. I did use some brads. Uh, I didn't show that part of the process just cause I was fiddling with it for so long. Um, but here I'm taking my stamps and stamping 2023 it comes out super crooked but <gasps> no oh my gosh 
this is the front. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> no wonder this one is so much easier to open. Jeez Louise. You know what? I'm just going to ditch this. That's what we're going to have to do. And we want to get this up off of here. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to cover that. All right. So that can work. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. You can always figure it out. A little butterfly. Okay. And this was perfect because this guy, I think he was rescued off of something too. You can see it's kind of torn up. So it's perfect because I'm reusing this butterfly that could have easily gone to waste. And it works out perfectly because they both have that little gold shimmer in it. I like it. I like it. So take two, here we are gluing down another piece of fabric with the Fabri-Tac and then the title plate with the tacky glue. I don't know why I switch glues. I feel like some glues work better for certain things. I may be wrong with which one I'm using for what, but to me, this works out good. I've also got some Amity Bloom Everyday Ephemera papers, which I love. I could use these. Look how beautiful these are. When I discovered her videos and her everyday, oh, I love this, everyday journal, I was like, Shh, that's, that, she is my people. <laughs> when it comes to journal style, this is exactly what I like. And then these are uh, to Casa de Papel, I think. And the same thing. I mean, just so bright, so vibrant, so beautiful, and right up my alley. And I printed some on vellum. You can see there are some mostly on paper, but that this is going to kind of be the gist, obviously, of this planner slash journal. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's going to be yet. Haven't decided. Like this. Uh, these are more of the Amity Bloom. These are this is a called a Bloom Pack, which is basically, I think, a feed sack images and then these are her everyday journaling papers these are beautiful as well uh is this these are the ephemera packs this is the ephemera oh shoot you know what this one is not amity bloom this one is oh what was the name of this one i forget i meant to write it down i will link it below these are amity bloom's ephemera packs so i think i'm going to use these for that inside cover and in the meantime, since the glue has now dried, I am stamping once again 2023 on the title plate, trying to be a little bit more deliberate about my spacing and making sure that I'm not getting any extra ink on the fabric. But it is a junk journal, so I don't mind if it looks a little bit messy and a little bit grungy. I think I'm going to use these at some point anyway, so I may as well just cut them out. And I also need to reinforce the spine, so... Whoa. Okay, let's see if any of these can work. I just picked these up the other day from a estate sale. Oh, that's still too small. My goodness. Decided to use some PVA glue right here along the edges. I kind of regret it just because PVA glue is so wet, so it always wrinkles the pages, especially when you're using scrapbook paper that is a little bit thinner. This is not the cardstock type of scrapbook paper, so it does wrinkle. Uh, I thought I was going to remedy that by not putting the glue all over and just along the edges, but it's still wrinkled anyway. And then adding some glue right along the spine to make sure that it stays put. But if we can get this to stay, We've got a pocket. So now I can start to add some of my decorative elements. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I do know that I wanted this piece of Amity Bloom's uh, ephemera. And then I'm using this envelope that's been sitting in my stash from Little Bindi. And I thought that I could put it in the front because I feel like, you know, when you have a planner, a lot of the times you're going to have little things that you need to keep in there. Uh, so I thought an envelope in the front would work out perfect. 
So just gluing the edges of the envelope down with some PVA glue and then right along that flap, placing it carefully into the pocket so that I don't glue the pocket down. I wanna keep this page because I can use that. I'm gonna tear this one out because as I add stuff, we have to compensate for the bulk. So I'm gonna tear this one. I prefer to do this so that it's a little cleaner. Okay. Oh, so I actually got through two and that's fine. Oh, hello, Ernest. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway. I want to keep this page. So I can do journaling on here. I just cover that. I absolutely love how much stitching can add to an element. So here I placed it right along the edges of this piece here that is for my goals. And I decided to glue it right onto that envelope that is from Little Bindi uh, so that I have a flap there right in the front of my journal talking about my goals. And also covering this page here with uh, the Nick the Booksmith planner pieces. This one says sweet memory, so I thought I could use this to either add some memories from 2022 or could even be from the past month. It just depends. I don't know. I'm just trying to get something in here to cover up the text on the book, and then I can decide later what I want to use this spot for. I'm li I like keeping those blank pages available for journaling, and so I'm basically only trying to cover up any spots that don't have text or that do have text. And so using any of those pages from the planner kit, inking up the edges and then just gluing them down onto the page. Of course, distressing the edges is once again, one of those things that really just adds so much. It's such a simple little thing to do, but it really creates a lot of depth on the page. And so highly, highly recommend doing that, especially if you have junk journals and you're kind of creating this grungy look. So just taking a glue stick and placing this paper down onto that page and now cutting out some of the pages uh, behind that. You do have to compensate for, you know, some of the space that you're taking up or some of the bulk that you're adding. And so a lot of people cut out seven to 10 pages. I'm just kind of going by how much I'm adding and I'm kind of just going by feel uh, because once again, I am trying to keep you know, the pages that have uh, blank spaces in this book. And so I'm just trying to be a little strategic about where I'm pulling out the pages. You do have to be a little bit careful though, just because um, they can start to space out in the wrong spots. So you do want to, you know, pull out pages where you're going to be adding papers. So this is the monthly spread from the planner kit. And so I just cut it in half and I'm gluing it down with a glue stick. So this will probably be my December layout. I do like to have the previous month in my planner just because sometimes I have to look back on appointments or whatever it may be. So this will definitely be December instead of starting just with January. And so once again, just inking up the edges um, to add a little bit of distressing. And I might add some more later you know, some decorative elements and I'm going to put an Edith Holden page in there. And here are some quotes that come in the planner kit. And so I decided to take this one. I forget what it says, something about planting a tree 20 years ago and planting a seed now. I don't know, <laughs> but I thought that was really appropriate for, you know, starting off a year. So I found the perfect thing to place on that title plate, uh, something to just remind me to plant the seeds and, um, you know, just get to work. So using some double-sided tape to stick down this library card right onto the front page, I will be decorating all of that with other things, but this allows me to have some time in between, you know, to think about what I want to do, maybe get some inspiration and, uh, and then be able to come back and create daily. This calendar I'm actually going to use for my husband's schedule. I like to have a separate calendar for his schedule. Um, 
Oh, this is actually the notes page. The other side was the, was the calendar. This this piece here, I don't know what I'm going to put on it, but just trying to cover up that text. I like to have a lot of availability to do some writing in the front of my planner, whether it be lists or notes. Um, in the past, I've had it in the back of planners. You know, a lot of planners are already kind of set. So this is really great because it gives you the flexibility to be able to create, you know, your own layout. And I absolutely adore this picture because it just works out perfectly that I'm placing my husband's schedule right here and my husband is actually a fisherman. So it worked out good that this picture is right there. And it's funny because I, I believe that this chapter of this book was actually called The Something Fisherman. I forget what the title was, but I, it's really appropriate and it's really cute. And I love the colors too. It kind of matches the whole theme, having that turquoise in there and and the browns and so... You know, that's things happen that way sometimes when you're creating. And then removing a few more pages since I added the calendar. And I know that I am going to be adding more to the pages behind that. So I'm just trying to compensate for the weeklies or even here where I'm placing my to-do list or my gratitude. I actually really like having a space for to-dos and a space for a gratitude. I'm probably going to need more space than that though, especially for my to-do list because I swear my daily list it's in itself is already like a whole entire page of a notebook. So, um, And then I did accidentally cut out a little bit of my page when I was using my razor blade. So I'm just using some washi tape to reinforce that page back in. Uh, I love using the William Morris washi tape, that really wide one. It's super sticky. I actually bought mine from Jet Pens. Uh, you can get it from several places, but that's where I got mine. I think it was like $10, but it's super worth it. And these are the weekly pages. I'm going to be adding those later on. But for now, that wraps up my setup for my 2023 planner. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Would love it if you stay here with subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you can create the monthly spreads with me. Until then, I'll see you again. Ahuiho and aloha.